how do you transition for something like that? Well, you continue to talk about the Holy Spirit. Continue to talk about the Holy Spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit to move in where he wants to take us. Uh, just thank you for everybody who's joining us online in this time. I, uh, I'm thankful for your hearts. I'm thankful for you being a part of this community that we're a part of here physically. Uh, we just had an amazing time of worship. We had to restart worship. It was so good. Uh, and we're just basking in the presence of God right now. And we just don't want that to leave in this moment, in this time. Um, it, it, it's such an awesome time to open up this series on the Holy Spirit. We're about to dive six weeks in on Sundays, on Thursdays, into who the Holy Spirit is, how the Holy Spirit functions, where is the Holy Spirit located? We're going to go through a lot of different things here on Sunday. Uh, on Thursdays, we're going to gather together um, as we have been in small groups. Uh, we're actually going to be testing out uh, going live on Thursdays. Um, so uh, you guys can be a part of that online too if, if, if you want to be a part of that. Um, and uh, with that said, uh, on Sundays, we're going to go over, I, I don't want to say like some general things, when it comes to the Holy Spirit, but we're going to take more of an airplane type view of the Holy Spirit, uh, talk about who he is, how he functions. Thursdays, I am I just cannot tell you how excited I am about Thursdays because we're going to get into the gifts of the Spirit on Thursdays. You know, Paul writes in uh, 1 Corinthians 12 through 14, he writes in Romans, he writes in Ephesians, uh, Peter touches it out in 1 Peter, the gifts of the Spirit. Um, we're going to focus in on what Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians 12, the nine gifts of the Spirit. Um, I often feel like, and I don't know what you guys think, you can agree, disagree with me, I often think sometimes there's a lot of people out there, even believers, that we've been given a weapon by God to go to warfare against the enemy, and we don't even really know exactly what that is, meaning the gift of the Spirit that we've been given, or gifts of the Spirit. And we can go to war with this weapon and wage warfare in the prince, against the principalities, against the darkness, against the rulers of this age. But what do we have to work with? We don't know sometimes. Um, I don't even know if you guys are aware that the, the profound gifts of the Spirit that God has given you is it's different from every, for everybody. We're going to go through and explain that. And not only what that is, but how to use it. And so we're going to dive into that on Thursday nights. And I'm expecting Thursday nights to be just as awesome as they've been, but even more awesome because we're just going to allow the Spirit to move in ways that, listen, if, if somebody is, is in the midst of, of what we're going through on Thursday nights, somebody is given the gift of tongues in that moment, we're going to acknowledge that and we're going to receive that and we're going to spend time in that. Uh, if somebody's receiving a gift of discernment, a gift of prophecy, and God is exercising that gift, we're going to go into that. And so it's going to be a little more in depth. It's going to be awesome. I love what God's going to be doing in all of this. Um, if we have time on Thursdays, we'll move into the fruits of the Spirit as well. But all things Holy Spirit uh, in these next several weeks together. Uh, I'm excited. Are you guys excited for this? You guys excited for this? Um, if you're online right now and you're excited for it, you can write in the chat, I'm excited for this. Uh, we're going to go over several different scriptures. I don't have anything in particular that I want to have you turn to right now. And again, they'll be on the screen, but you can turn as we're going through. But we get into the Holy Spirit. I, this is more of like laying the groundwork for the next five weeks. I got a little bit of an introduction to the Spirit, Holy Spirit. A lot of you may know some of these things. Some of you, it may be new that you're learning this. And online as well, you may not know some of these things. You may know some of these things, but it's always good to just be reminded to set in motion what God wants to do and to be prepared as we're moving forward in this series on the Holy Spirit. We're going to ask the, answer the questions like who, what, when, where, how today. Who, what, when, where, how? Like, who is the Holy Spirit? What does he do? How does he function? Where is he at? Uh, all of these different things. And so I want to start real quick with who is the Holy Spirit? Who is the Holy Spirit? And the most simple answer that we can give on who is the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit is God. Simply put, the Holy Spirit is God. And I wish I had a thousand years to explain the Trinity because it would take probably a thousand years. And even at that, we still wouldn't fully understand and grasp in our human minds the Holy Spirit and all that goes along with the Holy Spirit. 
We have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Have you guys heard the example of the egg before? Like the example of the egg, where if I, held, if I held an egg up right now, the egg is one egg. But in the egg, you have the shell. In the egg, you have the white yolk. In the egg, you have the yellow yolk. You take one of those away, it's not an egg. But it's one egg with three different parts, three different functions, one and the same. Another example uh, analogy is water. You take water in its liquid form, it's water. You put and you bring the temperature down. It's ice. It's still water, has a different function, different form. You bring it to boiling, it's steam. It's still water. It's still functioning, uh, perhaps in a different way, a different purpose. It's all the same, one thing, different functions. And so the Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is God. So we look at the Father, God the Father. And so we see a lot in the Old Testament, the presence of God. And we talk about the presence of God and how he manifests. In the Old Testament, it was a lot through God the Father and what we call theophanies. And so a theophany is a theological term. It's just an encounter with the presence of God the Father before the incarnation of Christ. And so we're, we're, we're learning who God is when he appears in different forms of the Old Testament. So we look at like the man who wrestled with Jacob, or you look at the burning bush, or you look at like the fourth man in the fire with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These are manifestations of God before the incarnation of Christ. And then Jesus comes along, and we see the presence of Jesus laid out in the Gospels of while he was here on earth, God the Father in human form through Jesus. And then we have the Holy Spirit who came in power at Pentecost. And since Jesus ascended into heaven and throughout all of the church age and where we're at right now, we have the presence of the Holy Spirit that is the primary manifestation of God. I say primary, not the only, the primary manifestation. So who is the Holy Spirit? He's simply God. He is God manifested through his spirit working through us as believers. And so we ask the, ask the next, next question, when or uh, was or is the Holy Spirit present? When was and when is the Holy Spirit present? You'd be surprised how many people I run into, believers, that are like, the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost, and that's when the Holy Spirit existed. I'm like, have you read your Bible? <laughs> have, what, were, what were you taught in Sunday school? But there's just a little bit of ignorance around it, and it's not because the person's ignorant. I think it's because we as a church, as a whole, have not taught the Holy Spirit very much. We, we, we kind of get somewhat, uh, I think, intimidated by it because it's hard to understand how the Spirit moves sometimes. Um, and we, we are comfortable with Jesus because Jesus walked here on earth. We have pictures of what we think Jesus looked like. We can, like, see him. Um, but the Spirit is a little bit different. The, the Spirit goes where he will. The Spirit does what he wants. And we can't see him. We can feel him. We can uh, tangibly sense his presence. But it's hard to know when the Holy Spirit is sometimes. But if we take a look at the Bible, this is really cool. I don't know. This is the part where I geek out about the Bible sometimes. But did you, did you know that the Holy Spirit is in the first chapter of the Bible and the last chapter of the Bible? The first chapter of the Bible and the last chapter of the Bible. I just think it's awesome. The Spirit of God bookends the Word of God that He gave us. In uh, Genesis 1-2, if you want to turn there, Genesis 1-2, it says, the earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And get this, the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Beginning of creation, we see the Spirit of God in place. And then it says in Revelation twenty two seventeen, 17, the Spirit and the bride say, come. And let the one who's, who hears say, come. And let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who desires take the water of life without price. And so at the last chapter of the Bible, we see the Holy Spirit present during that time. So the Holy Spirit was at the very beginning. He is at the very 
end. He is without beginning. He is without end, just like God the Father, God the Son. There is no difference in that. So answering the question of like, when was the Holy Spirit present? When is currently the Holy Spirit present? It is all time. It never ceases. It never goes away and will never go away. And I like this quote I heard from somebody. It says, since the very beginning of creation, we have an indication that the Holy Spirit's work is to complete and sustain what God the Father has planned and what God the Son has begun. To complete and sustain what God the Father has planned and what God the Son has start, started, he has begun. And let me explain that. We have the physical and then the spiritual in the sense of creation. The Holy Spirit is the agent of creation. We see him in the physical creation. We see him in the spiritual creation. Let's go back real quick to Genesis 1, chapter 2, where it says, And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And this word, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God, this, there's a word in the Hebrew that is synonymous. You can use it just, just as well as you use spirit. It's the word wind. The word wind in that verse specifically. There, there's different characteristics of the Bible that we see throughout all of Scripture. But in, in the very beginning, we see him as wind. And this word hovering, you can, you can use the word fluttering like a bird. Like he was fluttering over the waters. And so we're trying to get a grasp, like a mental grasp of this spirit, like this wind was hovering over the formless waters, the formless void before creation began. In Deuteronomy 32, it describes the spirit in that time as like a bird fluttering over the waters. Uh, and so he's hovering and he's moving. And it's just an amazing thing because when God speaks, it's his breath that speaks. It's his breath that speaks life into creation. And that breath is the spirit of God speaking something into what was nothing. Everything that we have right now was breath of his spirit as he spoke it into existence. And out of nothing, out of a void, we get beauty, we get order, we get vitality of life. And it's all done by the Holy Spirit. It's just an amazing, amazing thing that he was done, that he's done for us. So he was the agent of the physical creation at the beginning of time. And then we move into what Jesus started and begun with the church. And so the Holy Spirit is the agent of the new creation that we are. We are called a new creation in Christ. And when that new creation in Christ began, it was, it was the Holy Spirit that was deposited in you and the Holy Spirit that moves in you to make you a new creation in Christ. So he's the agent of the physical creation. He was the agent of the creation of Jesus conceived in human form. He's the agent of our spiritual renewed creation. This is an amazing thing. And so go with me to Acts chapter 10 real quick. Acts chapter 10, we're going to see how the Holy Spirit is the agent of creation in the spiritual sense and how he was given to us to be empowered as a people and a church. And it happened and it started through Jesus. Acts chapter 10, starting in verse 36, it says this, As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all, you yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea. They're reflecting on what had happened at the beginning at Pentecost. From beginning from Galilee, after the baptism that John proclaimed. And get this, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. For God was with him. Jesus was deposited the Holy Spirit. We see him come back from the time in the wilderness, a completely different man. The Spirit of God fell upon him when he was baptized. He went into the wilderness for 40 days. He comes back, and all of the miracles begin to take place. It was the Spirit. It was the power of the Holy Spirit that began to move in him. He was the agent of creation in the spiritual sense and what Jesus was doing. And then, 
And then after Jesus went away, the Holy Spirit was about to break through and empower us, the people, the church, the bride. Go with me to Acts chapter 2 for a moment. Acts chapter 2, we're going to read a very familiar story, starting in verse 1. This is the story of Pentecost. And it says, when the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. This is where the disciples and the 120, the 120 were gathered because Jesus had given them instruction not to leave Jerusalem until his spirit came. But they did not know how this was going to happen. Verse 2, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind. Now, hold up for a moment, because when I read this, and I had just got through Genesis 1-2, where it says the spirit, the wind, was hovering over all of creation, about to speak life into it. We have the Holy Spirit at Pentecost who comes like a mighty rushing wind. This is incredible to think that perhaps the same wind that was forming all of creation is the same wind that came at Pentecost to instill in us a gift by God, a deposit, the Holy Spirit in us. It's an incredible thing. And what happens? Verse 3, and divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. In that moment, the Spirit of God fell on them. They were given the gift of tongues in that moment. Now, I want to back up for a minute because we got to read this whole thing in context. I encourage you to go read all of chapter 2 in context because we have certain denominations of church, certain um, d- d- different thinkings in church, and I'm not going to call anything out as wrong or bad or anything like that. I'm just saying it, we got to read this for what it is because when it says that the tongues came, it's not some heavenly language that was spoken. It was literally like, Ty, if you spoke Spanish, like I was given the gift to speak to you in Spanish. Uh, Noel, you speak French, right? Well, if the Holy Spirit would come upon you, you could really speak it fluently because what if somebody w- was there from France and needed to hear the word of God. And so it, it, divided tongues fell. They were given different languages. And when you put it in context of scripture going back thousands of years, this is incredible. I'm going to just take a little bit of a rabbit trail real quick because it could go really deep and get really, really not confusing, but r- not muddy, but it could, get, it could just get really deep. I'll just leave it at that. I got to do the flyby version to kind of just bring to this moment the incredible order of God and how he planned things so in advance to do something miraculous in that time to bring people to him. If we go back all the way to the beginning of creation where Adam and Eve sinned, that's the first fall of man. That's the first fall of man. They were banished from the garden. And then you go to the time of Noah. And there's another fall of man because they've come, become so deprived and so ugly and so evil in the sight of God that he has to wipe out creation and start over with one family. That was another fall. Uh, the, the third one that we rarely ever, ever talk about in church was at the Tower of Babel. And if you go read the account of what happens in Genesis 11, after, or start back in Genesis 9, actually, God gives the command to Noah. When he gets off of the boat with his family, it's the same command that he gave Adam and Eve. Be fruitful, multiply, spread across the earth. Well, what do they do? A lot of people gathered in one city, one place. They were disobeying God. They were going against all the commands that he had set forth. And God was not pleased with them so much that he came down. He confused their language. He set them apart and scattered them across the world, gave them specific territories. We can get into so many spiritual dimensions in this thing. It's crazy. But he gave them different, different, um, different rulers and principalities to govern over those different areas. The very next chapter in Genesis is 12 in the call of Abram. Because God says, I have separated myself from these people. They have disobeyed me. They have been brought out of the covenant. They have been dismissed from the covenant covenant that I was going to establish for humanity. So now I'm going to draw this man to create this nation that is my own people. The rest of these people have disobeyed me. 
They are now shut off from the promise that I have. I'm drawing this man and I'm creating a nation. We know that as Israel. And we go throughout all history. At that moment, we have Jew and we have Gentile. We have Jews who are in the promise of God. We have the Gentiles who are separated. We have the Gentiles who are separated. And Jesus comes to bring it all back together. This is incredible. And he wants to draw everybody back to himself. Those who were separated at the Tower of Babel and throughout all of history up to that point, he wants to bring them back into the promise, the blessing. He says that Israel was going to bless all nations, all nations. And so we get a glimpse of what God is up to at Pentecost because at Pentecost, get this, it's a huge feast. Everybody from all the known world would travel back to Jerusalem. All the Jews who were scattered all abroad would come back to Jerusalem for Pentecost. And so you have people from all over the world, all over these Gentile nations where they're living, and they come and the Holy Spirit falls at Pentecost. And he gives them a language, them a language, gives them a language. And they're able to go out and they're able to communicate with everybody who's come from the known world to hear the gospel. 3,000 people are saved in that moment. Those 3,000 people most likely did not stay in Jerusalem because they're not from there. They got to go back to the nation that they were from and proclaim the gospel. So God said, I'm going to draw all the people in this one place and I'm going to give my spirit. I'm going to pour it out and salvation is going to come to these people. And guess what? They're going to understand and they're going to want to go back to their nation. And so all the nations are now being blessed. They're all being brought salvation through this act of the Holy Spirit being dropped on us at Pentecost. There's so many implications of this. We can go so deep into that. But it's just profound how God works all things in his will, in his way. It's so perfect. It's so wonderful. So the Holy Spirit, when Is he present? When was he present? He was present from the beginning. He's present now. He's going to be present in the time to come. It's a wonderful thing. Is this okay so far? It's okay so far. Where are we at on time? Okay, we're good on time. Okay, what does the Holy Spirit do? Anybody want to answer that question? What does the Holy Spirit do? I like this. It says, the work of the Holy Spirit is to manifest the active presence of God in the world, and especially the church. The Holy Spirit is the active presence of God manifested to other people, and it's especially for the church. The Holy Spirit was given so that we would be built up, we would build each other up, that we would go out and proclaim the gospel to those that need to hear salvation. It was the Holy Spirit who was deposited to us when we received Christ to work in and through us. And a lot of it is for the church, and we've got to understand that. And we've got to understand when it comes to the church, we've got to break down what church is for a second. Church is not four walls here. It's not the steeple. Uh, it, it, it's not the synagogue. It, it, it's not a building. You're the church. You're the church. I'm the church. We're the church. The person is the church. And so when we come together and we gather in a building, it's just the church already coming together. The Holy Spirit, and hear me, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not dogging on the things that are in church when I say this, but the Holy Spirit is not here to make your lights better. It's not here to make your sound system amazing. It's not here to make your social media look just wonderful and all aesthetic and pleasing. So when people look at it, they're like, oh, I want to come to that church. And the Holy Spirit is not here for a retention plan so people don't leave the back door and never come to your church again. The Holy Spirit was deposited in us to give us power that we would proclaim the good news to use the gifts that we have, the authority that we have in Christ. And we get to come together. We get to gather together as believers to build each other up so that we go back out through the power of the Spirit. All right. But here's some practical things, too, because I want to give some practical things. And we're going to dive into these things, this list of things over the next several weeks. I'm just touching on these real quick. But the Holy Spirit, what does he do? He guides us into all truth. The Holy Spirit points us to Jesus. The Holy Spirit establishes 
the spiritual gifts in us. The Holy Spirit leads us to salvation. The Holy Spirit intercedes on our behalf. The Holy Spirit speaks to us. Uh, in your email, if, you, if we don't got your email, get us your email on that card. Um, we have on our website, we're building a page specifically for this series. And on that page are going to be things like this. It's going to be all the videos that we're doing on YouTube for this. We're doing a lot more than just sermons. We're going to break down a lot of videos on YouTube about the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, all of this type of stuff. We're going to have downloads. Like this type of stuff will be in a blog or it'll be in a PDF download. Um, so there'll be a lot of resources on that. Um, that'll also be in the description if you're watching this on YouTube as well. But this, what does the Holy Spirit do in a nutshell? And this is just the tip of the iceberg. But this is the stuff that he does. This is how he functions in our life. He leads us to salvation. He doesn't just stop there, but he works that salvation out in us to sanctify us, to lead us into a better relationship with God, to be made and conformed more into his image. So this is what the Holy Spirit does. Now, a couple more things we'll discuss, and then we'll get you on our way, and we'll see you Thursday night or next Sunday here. But how does the Holy Spirit function? That's a question right there. And I want to I wanna take a little bit of a different route from that in the sense of not talking about the healings that he does or how he speaks to us, but just simply to say this, how does the Holy Spirit function practically? Well, the Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is a person, and it says that over and over in the Bible. He is spoken up in the Bible as a masculine pronoun. He is never called it. The Holy Spirit is never called it in the Bible. When Jesus, you go through John 14, 15, 16, 17, when he's talking about the Holy Spirit and telling his disciples that he's about to come, he always refers to he. And if you go back into the Greek and you just like as much as you can define it, it's, it's he. It's he. He is a person. He is a person. And he has attributes of a person as well. Did you know this? That the Holy Spirit can be grieved, Ephesians 4.30. Did you know that the Holy Spirit can be quenched in terms of the exercise of his will. He may be resisted as well. And so these are characteristics, in a sense, of a person as well. Um, and and, and it, when we think about not just like the person of the Holy Spirit, but what are his characteristics? How does, how does he function? How does he feel? How does he move? Let's go into a couple more things on the screen here. The Holy Spirit would just think about in terms of a person in, in these ways. The Holy Spirit teaches and reminds. The Holy Spirit speaks. The Holy Spirit makes decisions. The Holy Spirit has emotions because he can be grieved. The Holy Spirit can be outraged. He can be lied to. And the Holy Spirit helps and intercedes for us. And in Romans 8, 26 and 27, it says the Holy Spirit, the mind of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit has a mind. All of these attributes and characteristics of the Holy Spirit point to him as a person. And that's how he functions in our life. We can just break it down. Jesus was a man. The Holy Spirit is a he. And he functions just like that. And we're going to, uh, uh, this, again, this is a flyby version. We're going to dive deep into this stuff on Thursdays and Sundays to come. But leave that up for a moment as, as people are, are taking some photos of that and I encourage you to go read the scriptures on that as well. Um, and I want to end on this, this, this question. Where is the Holy Spirit? Where is the Holy Spirit? We're going through who, what, when, where, how. Where is the Holy Spirit? In essence, the Holy Spirit is everywhere. Not to sound hippie. <laughs> He's everywhere. But the Holy Spirit is everywhere. Psalm 139, verses 7 through 10 says this, Where shall I go from your spirit? Where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to the heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even, though, even there your hand shall lead me in your right hand, shall hold me fast. The Holy Spirit is everywhere at all times. We cannot escape from the presence of God. Jonah tried to do it. Didn't work too well for him. Learned a few lessons 
there. Um, and, and so we have people throughout the Bible who were trying to run from God. Um, Elijah hid from God and like he just wanted to, get, but you can't get away from the presence of God because he's everywhere. But more important than that, more important with that, and what I want to end with today is the Holy Spirit lives in you. The Holy Spirit, where is he? He is inside of you. As a believer, you were deposited with the Holy Spirit. This is so profound. I know as believers growing up in church, we're taught this. We read it in the Bible. I mean, Romans 8, 11, If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who dwells in you. Who dwells in you. And this is such a magnificent thing, guys. Listen, I think I've said this before, like around Easter or something like that. Um, but if you just think about how it used to work back in the Old Testament, they built a tent, they built a tabernacle, eventually a temple. But they could not go in the Holy of Holies where the presence of God was because they would die. You could not get in the presence of God in that way. It was locked off. Jesus came. He tore the veil. The Holy Spirit followed him and was deposited in you. The Spirit of God who created everything. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead. The Spirit of God who empowers everything that functions on this earth lives inside of us. Do you know how profound that is and how powerful that truly is? That we have been given a spirit that we are to function and partner with throughout our whole entire life to bring the kingdom of God upon this earth, to manifest the kingdom of God everywhere we go. Santi, you've been on wild trips. You've seen wild things. You've seen healings. You just described one last Thursday. This man's side was completely bruised, completely torn apart. And when you were done praying for him, there was nothing there. It was healed. It was gone. That is a drop in the bucket. Uh, yeah, clap. But that is a drop in the bucket about what the Spirit can do. The Spirit has no depths, no end to how powerful he is, and he lives in every one of us. And I'll be darned if we're going to go through the next six weeks and not see something manifest that we have never seen before. I will say and proclaim that as we go through this series, that there is going to be a revelation of the Holy Spirit in a profound way, in a very personal way, that we have never, ever experienced before. Just because it happened one time at Pentecost and 3,000 people were saved, why can that not be what we see happen today? How come we cannot go throughout a park like this and be so in partnership with the Holy Spirit, so in tune with what he says, acting in the power of the, that we see people radically change as we just walk by them. They stop. They stand stiff. They're like, what just walked by me? This is within us. This is the power that we have, the gift of the Spirit. We're going to dive into it on Thursday night. We're going to go into the gifts. You have been given a sword to slay the enemy. And every work and every power and every dominion, every authority that stands against us, we have been given each different gifts so that when we all come together, we manifest the full power of God in everything that we do. My goodness, I am excited for this. I am excited for this. So I want you to do this. I want you to set your hearts on the things above, not on earthly things right now. And for the next several weeks as we go through this together, I want you to do your own personal consecration. I'm calling it for it right now. If you need to fast, fast. If you need to do more intentional prayer, pray. Santi talked about it this morning in our huddle, being poor in spirit. We need to get humble before the Lord. He is about to do a mighty work. 
He is about to come like a mighty rushing wind over this valley, over this community, everywhere we go. And we must prepare ourselves like Joshua was commanded to give the army. Consecrate yourselves before the Lord because something incredible is about to take place. The land that which you have been promised is about to be given to you. And we have been given a promise by God through his spirit that we are going to see the kingdom of God here on earth. And we are his agents. We are his image bearers to go out and make that happen. It's only going to happen if we can get poor in spirit, if we can get humble before God, that nothing else but Christ matters in our life and the Holy Spirit is manifested low, more greater than we've ever, ever, ever experienced before. I'm up for that. Are you guys up for that? Are you guys up for a wild ride? Are you up for church to be different over the next few weeks? Our small group gathering to be different. Get ready. Bring your friends. Bring your friends. It's about to go down. It's about, and we need a bigger army than this. We truly do. I love who's all here and everybody that's a part of this, but this needs to grow and this needs to be bigger because we've got an army of believers that are going to come out and we're going to move forward and we're going to take over the principalities and authorities of this world and this valley and everywhere that you are online. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for just giving us a glimpse today of the understanding of who you are, Holy Spirit. And I'm asking for a greater revelation of that. As we go into a, a gathering together to study more and to learn more, I pray that you would give wisdom in that area. I pray that in our personal time with you that you would give more revelation in that. And I want to ask God that you would give us obscene opportunities that are so, so in our face, that, and we are so convicted by them that if we pass them up, we would think it's a sin. And not to bring condemnation, but Father, but just stir it up in our spirit by your Holy Spirit. Something so profound in us that makes us want to jump out of our skin and just run to people and tell them about your love. That makes us want to jump out of our skin and run to them and tell them about the good grace of Jesus. Give us Give us what we're asking for, God, in the forms of our gifts. You said in your word to ask and seek earnestly for the gifts. And so we're going to do that. I pray that over the next several weeks that you would give us a revelation of what that is. Make it so clear to us and how to use the gifts so that we can go out and bring more people to your kingdom, Father. This is all about your glory. This is all about your presence. This is all about us just becoming more aligned in our hearts, mind, and will to the things that you want. And I pray that you would reveal that to us, that you would take away every ounce uh, of, uh, of evil thinking, of disdained thinking, of the things that are heart, wrench our hearts dry, of the things that should not be in there and put us in a place that we can receive from you in a greater, greater way, God. We thank you for this time in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. We'll see you guys on Thursday and next Sunday.